Hello students, welcome back to my YouTube channel PD Tutorial and today I am going to teach you Koshi Gorsha's theorem. Okay. So before starting the theorem or before proving the theorem, I am going to start with the lemma. With the help of lemma only we are going to prove this theorem. Okay. And that lemma is called Gorsha's theorem only. Okay. What is the statement of lemma? Let Fz be analytic within and on a closed contour C. Then for every epsilon greater than 0, it is always possible to divide the region within C into a finite number of meshes, either square or partial square, such that with each mesh there is a point Z0 for which Fz is differentiable basically. Okay. So I will make you understand what is the meaning of the statement. Okay. So the statement is saying let we are going to just let that fz be any function which is analytic within and on a closed contour c okay for every epsilon greater than zero and it is possible to divide the region within c into a finite number of meshes what is the meaning of meshes basically we are going to mean by this word is like jala simply you have to divide it in a part very very fine sections okay if you are going to i just draw we just take any reason or contour c this is the contour c okay and this is the reason r this whole reason r we can divide it into a meshes this is called meshes that section is called meshes this every section is called meshes okay then we find a point z naught in any square or partial square for which as z is analytic for this point z naught okay so basically my point is that i am going to prove this lemma by using the contradiction method okay so let's just suppose see here just suppose so I will make you understand firstly with the picture that we are going to suppose that this lemma is false okay we are going to take as assumption that this lemma is false this lemma is saying that as that is analytic and we are going to find a point z naught it squares or passes square for what as that is going to be analytic for every point z naught okay that is present in the mass but we are going to let it like it is wrong it is not going to be mm, analytic for every point z naught okay so we are going to take a section let's just say we are going to take this section this mesh and denote it by sigma naught okay we are going to divide this section i'm going to draw I any mean, zoom huh. So basically I draw that the zoom picture of this section that this is sigma naught and just suppose uh, just suppose this is sigma naught and this is the point z naught we find in that mesh. We are going to divide this section in four parts. Again this section have this z naught consider this section at sigma 1. We are again going to divide this section. So after certain or finite number of steps, we found any mess where this Z0 got vanished. We didn't find this point at all. So our assumption is going to be hold for the finite number of steps that we are going to find no messes where this Z0 is present for which Fz is going to be analytic. My assumption is true for finite number of steps. Okay? So just let if you are going to continue this process for a infinite many times, okay? Like we are going to assume there is a point Z naught in sigma naught, and we are going to take the section. Again, this Z naught is present in this mess. Again, this is denoted as sigma one. Again, we are going to take this section. Again, we are going to denote this mess as sigma two. Again, we are going to this section. So after even doing this step for infinite many times we find a mess where z0 is common for all that there should be a box box and box and there is a point z0 and all this box have this point in common so this is going to be the limit point for all this mess okay z0 is going to be limit point 
so as that and we know that for limit point so this is actually the interior point for the contour c and as that is not analytic at the interior point so at that time we face at our assumption so at this point gauss's lemma is proved true okay what i said i have written here suppose if possible the lemma is false so we start the proof of the lemma by assuming that the lemma is false it means what that means that we are going to suppose lemma fail for at least one mess so it is going to fail at least for the one mess for a one section so we are going to let the capital r denotes the reason within and on a closed contour c divide this reason into a finite number of messes then there is at least one mess say sigma not for which the equation one does not hold okay so we are going to divide this section into very finite number of messes for this reason r for which the equation one is does not going to hold okay so it may be square or partial square divide sigma not into four equal squares then at least one of this square contains the contains the points of r for which one is not true so it contains the point z not so we again denote it by sigma 1 and again quadrisect sigma 1 and repeat the above process okay again quadrisect or divided into four parts if this process can if this process comes to an end after a finite number of steps then it is a contradiction to our supposition hence the lemma is true so what i have said we are going to find after a finite number of step there is at least one mess present after repeat process of this quadrisect this point is not present in at least one mess for which our assumption is true so it is holding for finite number of steps again if we are going to repeat this process infinitely we obtain a sequence of the square each contained in the preceding ones which has z not at its limit point so what i have said if we continue this process various times we just see we require and we get various number of section that is sigma not this is sigma 1 this is sigma 2 up to infinity then at point is behave like a limit point for that contour and the z not is going to be the interior point of that contour c for which the condition 1 is not satisfied so basically this condition is greater than is equal to epsilon okay so this proves that as z is not differentiable because it is against the definition of differentiability and if it is not differentiable so that is very simply said that as z is not an analytic at all which contradicts the fact that as z is analytic so in the starting of the statement of lemma in the statement itself it is said that as z is analytic okay but but here we fail okay so our supposition is going wrong consequently that gauss's lemma is proved true okay so with the help of this lemma we are going to prove gauss's theorem if you want to separate video of only gauss's theorem the video is also available in my youtube channel you may find the link in the description box and and yes one more thing so don't confuse between what is partial square and square so you know the square that is the mess which is in the shape square okay and what is partial square partial square is this part which is not completely a square it is like this it is packed with four side and one side is like curved form so this is partial square this is not perfect square so you may say this is a complete square or this end part this is side part is called partial square okay nothing much